Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to today's Unseen video. We've got loads to go through. Uh, we're going to start with Nightbirds. Uh, we've got a bit of merch and a few other things to take a look at. Uh, of course, this is the weekend. Uh, we've got Friday, Smackdown in Scotland. We've got Saturday, Clash at the Castle in Scotland. Sunday, we're going to do a live stream where we talk about whatever has kind of gone down regarding in Wyatt Six, Uncle Howdy. So we're going to do that on the channel on Sunday. Monday is the day. We are not far from the 17th now. So much excitement around. And I hope you're feeling it as well. I hope it's coming through to you and whatever it is that's going on in your life. But we are literally just days away. So, so, so exciting. So let's go through this Nightbird stuff. There's actually not loads because we haven't had loads this week to be honest. But this was a big one. So uh, this, according to multiple sources, the new Bo Dallas group is slated to film videos this week in advance prior to their unveiling, which may come as soon as this Monday Night Raw. That's certainly what we're expecting. And we did get some confirmation on the group members, but we knew who they were anyway. So members of the faction, rumoured to be Bo Dallas, Joe Gacy, Eric Rowan, Nikki Cross, Dexter Loomis, that coming from PW Insider and Wrestle Purists. Um, as I said, not much there in regards to obviously who's in the group. We already knew that. Um, I think the vignettes, I mean, honestly, these things could be aired at any point. They could have filmed them and they could air them on SmackDown. They could have filmed them. They could air them at Clash at the Castle. They could air them on Monday. I mean, we could get like little vignettes leading towards their debut at the end of the show. It could be that they film them and they're going to feature as part of QR codes. I mean, it doesn't really give us much, to be honest. I mean, there's so many different ways that you could use these film videos. Just makes it hard to know how they're going to use these film videos. But people will be excited to hear that more content is being created. More content is on the way. But of course it is. Of course it is. Because the group are on the way. And this thing, as we've said, is just getting started. You know, QR codes have been great. Looking and digging into all the investigation work. But listen... That doesn't mean the conversation has ended. Wrestling doesn't end. It just keeps going. So uh, obviously we move on to the next stage this weekend and certainly Monday when we're expecting this group to debut. We got this as well. So this is a Bray piece that was posted by Loomis's art account. I didn't even know that Dexter Loomis had an art account, but apparently he has an art account on Instagram. Um, and so that is Shaw Dorgarts. So uh, Shaw Dorgarts. Uh, so that must be Dexter Loomis on Instagram. But there we go. He's drawn Bray. So there's Bray, there's uh, Loomis uh, having signed it. Nice piece, that. Nice piece. As I said, didn't even know he had an art account, but very, very cool. Uh, Animate Fiend Zeno said, this is so amazing. So shout out to you guys. Uh, and then, honestly, the only other thing I've got is just this from Wendy Chu. Uh, she sent this out a couple of days ago now. She said, did Chu miss me? Uh, and obviously, we were talking about Wendy yesterday. I think she would make a great member of the fun house um a lot of people have said just because she's spooky she doesn't have to be in the white six i completely agree i completely agree she doesn't have to i think we're just saying she could she could fit into that world she doesn't have to but she could and i think because she kind of wears like pajamas and she carries a pillow around and everything it's got a bit of like a childlike quality to it that's not the kind of thing an adult does it's more something a child does, like if they're going on a long journey, they might take a quilt and a pillow with them. And so, like, you kind of see her here. She's got her hair done a certain way. She's got her makeup done a certain way. Like, you could kind of see this being childlike, doll-like, puppet-like. I just think she really fits in with the Funhouse very, very well. And by extension, that White Six group very, very well. But for those that have said we don't have to shove all the spooky stuff into one group, 
I do agree. So uh, I'm just very excited to see what we're going to do with her. But definitely someone to keep an eye on. And if you're into the whole Bray thing and Nightbird thing, this is Wendy Chu. She's in NXT. She wasn't dark and moody like this uh, when she got injured. Now she's back. We've kind of evolved the character. And this is someone I think you might want to keep an eye on. So that was the Nightbird folder. Let's have a look in the WWE fold. Oh, my God, it's next to nothing. Here's uh, Jay Uso. It has been a very quiet day. Uh, here's Jay Uso. Make that move that you're afraid of making. What does that mean? So, WrestleOps, just uh, pointing this out. Make that. Is this just a bit of motivation? Or is this a glimpse into his mind? Is he going to be making a move soon that he's afraid to make? Like, what does that mean? What does that mean? I don't know. Very interesting. Very cryptic. So, uh, yeah, that coming from Jay. Let's have a look at the perv folder. You might not... Um, it's a bit different, this one. You might not expect this. But uh, this is from Triple H's thoughts, who said, I wonder how many of these were sold. Uh, so this is from WWE back in 2008. It's a Melina Bottle Throttle. Um, from, I don't know, December 2006. Does a stuffy party need some livening up? Whip out this stainless steel WWE screw job. Simply fasten Melina to a bottle of Chateau Mont Rothschild. Twist her top and the diva will reward you with a revealing split. Now lower her legs into a more ladylike position and pop. Just keep some brawny handy in case you mess yourself. So this was an, I mean, was this an actual item? <laughs> I think that's, I've never seen this before. But um, like, are they saying they actually, I have never seen this. I've never even seen one of these. I've never even seen this post so did they make this is this like an actual item that they made back in the day it's it's it uh, we've come a long way man we've come a long way uh, could you imagine them doing something like this in 2024 i just can't see it i just can't i can't picture them doing this um we've definitely come a long way so i thought you uh, it was one of those that i was just like let's say it caught my attention and it also does look like she's got a metal penis. That is true. You was thinking it. Come on. You was, I was thinking it. You was thinking it. It looks like she's got a gold metal penis. So God bless WWE. Uh, right. So we had that perv. Let's have a look at merch. So merch, these are figures, new figures, some really interesting figures, actually. So uh, what we'll do is if we go full screen on this uh, and then click on that. So this is the new Kevin Owens Survivor Series figure. It's got a build and Adam Pierce. So you can see that they've done him with uh, Dusty Rhodes shirt on which is really really cool face looks really good i think this is a pretty solid figure to be honest lots of tattoo detail on there so i think that one's quite nice we've obviously got a Sami Zayn honorary oose this is all based on last year's survivor series so oh no or was it two years ago sorry so uh, I'm guessing this is when it was like Bloodline and then, of course, Sammy would eventually turn at the Royal Rumble. So, yeah, you're going back to Survivor Series 2022. So there he is with his honorary Oos shirt on. That's all right. Don't mind that. I, and you might be able to find a better Sammy than that. I think these are fun, man. Look at this. These are the Bushwhackers. Uh, and they donned the doink uh like mask and the face paint so this is bushwhacker luke and what's great is you can swap the heads over so you can just have the normal bushwhackers but you get this really fun survivor series uh alternative head when they dressed up as doink so there we go i think that's brilliant i love that but then this is my era i love this era and there's butch uh exactly the same so, again, swappable heads, though. So you can just get them and you'll have the Bushwhackers, like one of the most loved teams. Uh, then we've got this. So these aren't the Survivor Series ones. This is this new collection from the Vault. 
this is ringside collectibles exclusive this is billy gun and uh there we go comes with a old school tag team championship new age outlaws of course degeneration x looks pretty fun that i don't mind that and of course if you're gonna have a billy gun you've gotta have a road dog road dog Looking good. I don't know if the facial hair's a bit dark. It might just be the light in. I don't know. It does look a little dark. Um, love the belts. But yeah, face scan technology looks amazing. Rikishi. Look how great. The, look how much fun this Rikishi is. Love that uh, championship as well. We don't get that too often. So just fun. A massive smile on it. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? <laughs> love that. That's a that's a real fun one, that one. Uh, this is good as well. This is when Undertaker disguised himself as Kane. And um, again, it's got like the removable Kane masks. But it's Undertaker that was actually underneath. Uh, it comes with the uh, old WWE Championship as well, of course. But really, if you put it on, you've got a Kane figure. You've got a Kane figure, but with a really interesting secret, if you will. So I really like that. And then we've got Sean, Degeneration, DX uh, attire, and uh, look at that, the Winged Eagle Championship. Uh, I, I don't know if we've had this Sean face before or if that's a new face scan, but uh, I think that looks pretty good. Don't mind that at all. Uh, and then they've got this uh, Paul Heyman. So this one's a bit weird because I don't know what the articulation is like. Plus, he's not a wrestler, he's a manager, but it does come with two belts and some swappable heads. So there we go. Articulation on this is probably okay, but I don't know. Are you not going to be able to do... I think if you've got a Roman figure, you probably need a wise man. So it's probably a good idea to get this into the line. But uh, to be honest, they've done basics of Paul Heyman that are absolutely fine. Uh, and you could just get those. I, I would imagine a lot of people have probably already got these belts. But if you haven't, and better articulation on the arms actually here. So, yeah, I'd say if you haven't got one, this is the one to get. But uh, I don't know if people will be racing out for that. Uh, old school diesel with uh, tag belt and uh, winged eagle. Beautiful. Lovely. Entrance vest as well. Um, again, I don't know if it's just me, but the facial hair looks really dark. We did go through a period where the facial hair kind of felt a bit more, like, faded and a bit more natural looking. These feel a bit like we've took a bit of a step backwards, actually. The way that the paint is applied, it feels very bold. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter so much with Diesel, but as we saw with Road Dog earlier... I think I'd like it to be a little fainter. They might have... Yeah, you see, that looks better. That's not just splodged on. You can kind of sense that it is facial hair. Yeah, that looks good. Eddie Guerrero. Great attire. Undisputed championship. That really great attire. Love that. I think that really pops. So, uh, and then this is that build. Uh, and I think this is his first figure. I'm not aware of us ever having a Adam Pearce before. So there we go. You have to collect, I think, those Survivor Series ones we looked at earlier. And you see what I mean about the facial hair there? Looks a little bit more natural. I think that looks really good. That's good. So you get you collect the other figures and then you can build that one. So there we go. That was uh, the merch stuff. Those were just some new figures that I saw today that I thought some of you uh, may not have seen and would be interested in looking at. I think the folder with most stuff in is this one. It is... Um, the Clash at the Castle folder. So let's have a look, shall we, here at Wrestle with Andy. See what Wrestle with Andy's found. So this is the store, the official store. This is what it looks like. It's big, isn't it? It's a good size. So a big thank you to Andy for sending this over. Look at that. Scotland scarf. That's pretty cool. If you're a WWE fan, you're Scottish, you'd, that'd be a good pickup. But there we go. That is what it looks like. That is the official Clash at the Castle store in Scotland. So very, very cool. So Wrestle with Andy, thank you, my friends. Really appreciate that. 
Uh, let's hit play oh, no. on this. So here, uh, Savalina says, looking like an absolute queen whilst visiting Sterling Castle. So there we go. Nia Jax has found her throne at Sterling Castle. It's cool, isn't it? We got loads of castles over here. I mean, honestly, you're just tripping over them. Uh, here's Jade Cargill. She said she lost her bags in Scotland. But uh, look at this. Lost my bags, but we are here. Do you know, it's really weird. I mean, this looks like a pretty old pub in the sense of, you know, you can see, like, the brickworks just been painted. You can see that, like, things don't really match. <laughs> but it's still got, like, you know, the old kind of wooden tables, whatever. Um she, I mean, she seems to be bringing, like, American glam over to, you know, what is just a local pub for local people, really. So, but, I mean, to be honest, she's getting that kind of authentic experience, isn't she? You know, this is the kind of place that is going to be, I would imagine, well, I don't know if it'd be in the middle of nowhere, but I, I could imagine, you know, you're kind of going down a lane and, like, you'll come across a little place, you jump in. That's probably what it's going to look like. You know, these kind of places, they don't worry about interior design so much. Um, it's just about being warm, being, be, you know, getting in out of the colds and having a nice cold pint to drink. That's it. That's as far, and like, you know, friendly sometimes staff. But um, yeah, it's, I, this picture, I just find it fascinating. I, I, I think that this really strikes me as like Jade bringing that kind of, hey, I'm American glamour to uh, a place that doesn't look quite as glamorous. But as I said, she's getting that real, that real experience. Uh, here, look, this is Glas Glasglow. Love that from Naomi. Glasglow. So uh, Naomi out and about in uh, Glasgow. Some people call it Glasgow. Not in, not in the UK. But um, abroad, people pronounce it that way. But it's Glasgow. Uh, this is, uh, I'm guessing, on the plane. And I'm guessing this is, well, I'm guessing that's on the plane. I certainly don't think she's at the top of a tower there, is she? Or is she? Maybe she is. No, that would be too high. That must be the plane. Uh, that's on the top of, like, a castle or something. And there's a cannon here. So, they're everywhere. Castles. Psh, boring. Uh, and then there she is, just <clears throat> living her best life. Is that, that might be, is that Edinburgh? I don't know. Hmm, don't know. I don't know where she is. Interesting, though. So we've got that. Here's me, Chim. So uh, Brie 4L in Scotland. Yes, I look atrocious. No makeup. Straight off the plane to hang with Jolene and some boomer. Uh, and she found Dakota and uh, Shane Baszler uh, figures in Scotland. So that's a figure store. Um, collectibles, toy store, somewhere in Scotland. I wish I knew where these people were. I mean, that I, I have been to Edinburgh Castle. It does look like that may be Edinburgh Castle, but I really don't know. I mean, this doesn't look like Edinburgh, to be honest. Um, I mean, she's in Glasgow, but I don't think Glasgow have got any castles. But then this might not be a castle, might it? Might just be a building with a wall. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. My Scottish knowledge is uh, uh, not as strong as it should be. Uh, so, yeah, she was toy hunting. Very cool. Joe Coffey said, wherever you are in the world, it will be a class weekend. Uh, here's Grayson. Uh, do you remember yesterday he called them uh, the Lord Farquhar's DIY? Just a little glimpse of what uh, we can expect on the Grayson Waller effects. Uh, here, I thought they did them dirty, man. So here you've got Drew, right? Uh, so you've got Drew and you've got Piper Niven. And it says, uh, Rangers Football Club said, Today we welcome Drew and Piper and world's strongest man, Tom Stoltman. So they've done them dirty here because obviously Drew has got to have his picture taken next to the actual world's strongest man, Tom Stoltman, right? Who uh, I think has won it a few years in a row. Look at the size of this guy. Do you know, when you think about how much bigger Piper Niven is compared to the other women, like when Piper's in there, you know, she's got a real size to her. And then you think about the other women and how they compare. They're normally smaller and a lot thinner, right? 
Piper is obviously uh, a very imposing figure. I mean, she looks like a, a child compared to <laughs> compared to Tom. Look at this. It's incredible, isn't it? I wonder if WWE are looking at this dude going, oh, God, if only we could just get him to the performance center and just see if we can teach him something, anything. I suppose they've got Braun Strowman. I don't know that this dude's bigger than Braun. He's, he's certainly stronger than Braun, world's strongest man. Uh, and then we've got this. WrestleBuzz said, who's cutting the damn onions? And I didn't quite know what they meant by that because... I mean, what? But this is actually really lovely. This is really cool. So, I'm not going to give the actual weights or the years, but did you know that the world record for chest press couldn't be broken? And people just thought it was, say it was 400 pounds, people thought you couldn't bench press it was 400 pounds. And then the very same year that it was broken, it was broken three more times. The foundation of the people over 20 believed it was possible. That's how I feel about you, the Scottish wrestling. None of us thought that being a WWE wrestler or any of this was possible. And then you did it. You became a WWE wrestler, you became a superstar. And look at us now. Now we're having our own PLE. It's amazing, isn't it? Isn't that really cool? I thought that was a really, really cool. What a lovely way of work. Because, like, you're going, what? Where is she going with this? <laughs> like, where is she going with this? I, I, that's an amazing story that the chess press couldn't be beaten and no one thought it possible. Then as soon as it got beaten, it, it got beaten a few more times because everyone knew it was possible. And she's like, so I feel about you. You've basically broken that door down for us to uh, now be here and have this PLE. So amazing that. Love that amazing right let's go to fern i don't think there's oh my god uh right here's dormouse 69 said all i can do is laugh my ass off you've got to love rick flair the pen's wearing whoa grandma the pen's wearing whoa 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 scooter driving grandma <laughs> whoa, whoa energy drinking whoa whoa <laughs> living through ride slow down grandma love your ring whoa 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 whoa, whoa. <laughs> Depends where grandma I mean what is going on? What is going on? Do you know there is a, a, a clip I put it out actually. I put it on my Twitter account. You gotta watch it. It's um there's a radio station here called Talk Sport and and it's just people phoning in about football and you know rugby cricket and they just talk about it all day and they and they have a laugh you know I'm sure you have those kind of sports stations. Well the conversation got round to WWE and uh someone calls in and starts telling them about some of the fun stuff in wrestling and the hosts they just can't believe what they're hearing, right? And they talk at one point about Rikishi and Ric Flair and all this kind of stuff. It's about eight minutes long. If you want to skip the first four minutes, you can. I think it gets good about, like, really good. Like, I'm crying at about the four-minute mark. But um, if you get a chance to watch it, watch it. It's on my Twitter account. There's a link to it. It's just, it's just funny. Uh, I'm, I'm not promoting it or anything like that other than to say it's so, so funny. So, uh, yeah, this is brilliant as well. Right, uh, here we've got uh, Ludwig Kaiser on helium. Let's go. So that was uh, Stud Muffin Supreme, I'm thinking. So uh, this is all because this person said timeline's kind of boring right now. And uh, there was Hangem High going, I got you. I got you. Have you seen this? So uh, very good. Uh, Derez fan, thank you.
Byron Saxton, look at this, went to uh, a collection of bobblehead dolls. Uh, and there was over 10,000 of them. One of them was the fiend that he found. But uh, Byron's always going to these really strange places. But uh, here, look, if we go, uh, look at all that stuff that he found. And then he found some wrestling ones. So I feel like, is that Hogan, maybe? This one, the yellow. Uh, and then we got Ric Flair. Then we got the Fiends. That one feels like Brock, doesn't it? I'd say that's probably Brock next. So uh, shame that we couldn't see other wrestling ones. Um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we've got some basketball ones as well. And then I think he finds... He finds the Lord. He finds the Lord. He finds craven o cream over here and some uh, boomers but look at this one craven o cream the lord over there <laughs> so uh yeah jesus jesus this one's trying to escape look so uh there we go very good very fun uh and then we got this so uh, Drew was inducted into the Scottish Wrestling Hall of Fame. Um, and he talks about how proud he was and to be inducted and to be inducted at Ibrox, uh, which is where the Rangers play. Um, lovely. So a big honor for him to be inducted. H here's what Wolfgang had to say about it. Through all this uh, success, I love that you have not changed. You're still a dick. Through all this. <laughs> That's all that needs to be said, isn't it, really? That's all that needs to be said. Right, a couple more bits and bobs here. Oh, a bit more than I thought, actually. So, Jordan, thank you. Wrestling News, Jeff Hardy is apparently returning to TNA this weekend, according to PW Insider, he is seemingly done with AEW. I mean, to be honest with you, not a situation I'm keeping an eye on. Um, if they end up coming back to WWE, which I'm not convinced they will. Um, I mean, look, I, I would bring them back on a Legends deal, but I think their in-ring careers are probably done. You could probably bring them back for like one more match, one very short run as you build towards, say, WrestleMania or something like that. But uh, I think by and large, it's it's done, right? Um, and I think someone probably needs to say that because I just don't think that they're going to be the ones to call it a day. So for me, it's a situation that I'm not really keeping an eye on. But uh, this is the latest I've heard. Jeff Hardy apparently on his way to tna don't know if it's just a short-term thing long-term thing but there you go you know as much as me now shakim said he doesn't look like he's coming back at SummerSlam. look at that the rock shares an update following an injury to his elbow from filming the smashing machine uh, he confirmed there's no extensive tissue damage, but suffered a ruptured bursa sac that will eventually heal. So I don't know. I don't know how long that takes to heal, but um, you know, if it's bruising, then it will go down. If it is just bruising, um, then it will obviously go down. He may be okay for oh, i don't know i mean summer slams what august yeah i mean it, the bruising will have gone down by then it depends what like depends what other issues there are in there but at this point we don't even know if he's going to be doing anything at summer slam but uh yeah that image being shared uh around brutal looking done whilst filming his latest film the smashing machine Sammy said, I can't wait to do this again. Toronto, July 4th, details to come. So that was the kind of on stage comedy thing that he did as a part of that Netflix is a joke fest. And uh, looks like he's got the bug now and he uh, wants to go again. Uh, Undertaker, I think I've included this a couple of times by mistake. But uh, Undertaker said... That if Tony Khan's AEW can rival WWE, it would benefit everyone from the superstars to the fans. So he said his uh, heart's in a good place and he wants to do some. But I just don't know that he's got the acumen to run a wrestling company against the juggernaut that is WWE. But hey, I could be wrong. There was that one other time I was wrong. But I hope they get it together and we do have some competition. It's better for 
for the wrestlers. It's better for the audience. It's better for the fans. So uh, this has been spun uh, a few different ways. I don't really take that as too much of a shot. He's just sort of questioning as to whether Tony has got the the ability to run a company up against WWE. You know, WWE, it's cutthroat. And I don't know that Tony will be cutthroat. He's a, he's a nice guy, and that might be his downfall, to be honest. So, you know, there's plenty of nice guys that Vince has put out of business over the years, so... I don't know. I've seen a lot of people going, oh, and take taking shots and all of that. Mm, I'm not sure. I think he was just sharing an honest opinion, actually. So, I don't know. If if you took it as a diss to AEW, I would say ignore it. Move on. Uh, Shawn Michaels said, talks about his matches that are underrated. Oh, yeah, this was interesting. Uh, so, he did an interview with the Schmo, right? I don't know who the Schmo. Oh, I think I do. They might do UFC. Right. Um, Mick and I had a hell of a match at Mind Games. It was just a one shot deal. And it's one of those where I always think that Mick and I, if we had an opportunity to do a bigger story, we could have done some fantastic things, uh, which is true. Imagine Mick Foley against Sean in a program. Uh, the other was Jeff Jarrett. Uh, we had an intercontinental title match. Jeff and I always had good chemistry. Those are the two that I think get mentioned, but they don't get brought up in the overall standpoint. Uh, those are two that I'm proud of that just don't get talked about enough. So there we go. Sean Michael sharing his thoughts on some of the underappreciated matches that he had. This was interesting. So uh, I think that Carmella did an interview with Chris Van Vliet and basically said she wasn't a fan of this version of herself. Um, and uh, Mella said, it's not that I didn't like it. I just didn't want a new character and it didn't pan out the way it originally started. So I felt like I wasn't doing the character justice. When I was told I needed a new direction, I went all in and I pitched this entire character. Uh, going to find the original video I had made and I will post it here for you. So she says that she's going to find, she still hasn't uploaded the original video, but she's basically saying that she doesn't want to go back to this version of her character. Uh, it didn't play out the way that she envisaged. And um, I, I, I don't think that she's got necessarily good memories about this time. But um, I don't know. I think she should come back and try something new personally. I think she's been away for a while and it'll be very interesting to bring her back. You know, she's been around a long time now, all things considered. So, you know, hopefully she's had a good think about what she wants to do and she could be really inspired while she's been away and uh, hopefully come back with something different. You know, look at what Tony Storm's doing. Amazing. I'm not saying she should do that, but, you know, sometimes thinking out of the box can, uh, can really benefit. Uh, we spoke on that one. We've already done that. Sean, again, uh, just further to his interview with the Schmo, said, a guy like Seth Rollins, I think I could get in there with him and do fantastic stuff. Cody is another one. And Logan, I think he's someone that's incredibly talented. There are a number of guys that I look at and I think to myself, gosh. <laughs> 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 who 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 thinks gosh in 2024 i love that gosh uh if you was 20 years younger wouldn't it be really cool to wrestle my god imagine if we had sean around sean against seth sean against cody sean against logan oh my god and i'm sure he would love to face carmelo and trick and braun and it is just this whole new generation that's around isn't it that he just never he never competed with um, and then this is our last one. This is Cora Jade. First bio dex test down five months to the day. So here's uh, Cora Jade. Just uh, obviously she had an uh, ACL injury. So here she is kind of putting her leg through the paces as she is uh, trying to see if she can uh, obviously advance her recovery gauge as to where she is i'm guessing that must measure 
you know, something and uh, give them some... Uh, it's weird, isn't it? Seeing her being, like, strapped to the chair, holding onto these handles as she's, like, kicking out or whatever. So this is, you know, this is the side of the injury and the recovery that we just don't see. The amount of work that has to go in to get him back, don't really think about those things. But things looking good, things looking promising as uh, Cora Jade continues her road to recovery. So there we go. That is it. That is today's Unseen. Uh, quite quiet, to be honest, but we still did 35-minute episode. Uh, but, uh, yeah, really appreciate the support. Don't forget, we are back uh, later for SmackDown, and it's an early SmackDown because it comes live from Scotland, so it's early. Don't forget. Then, uh, of course, we will be back on Saturday for Clash at the Castle, and we will be live hours before and through the countdown and through the show itself right uh of course there'll probably be nightbird videos because we're bound to get stuff this weekend sunday we'll do a special nightbird wyatt six live stream and then do i need to tell you about monday i don't think i do right awesome thanks a lot for watching appreciate the support i will see you again next time bye for now